Silver is almost ready. The real question is, are you? And for what? I'll tell you in this video as we explore. There are a lot of pundits and prognosticators that have their views on what silver is going to do in, the, in a certain um, time frame. Count me among one of them for sure, but nonetheless, I think what sets me apart from others is that I tried to be as realistic as possible and give you the understanding that really anything that I say is just an opinion. And everything that I give you here is just uh, is just simply for entertainment purposes and for educational purposes. Uh, but nonetheless, no one really knows. No one really has any real idea other than an educated guess. And that is really my only thing that I, that's the only thing I can grasp onto is the educated guess based off of my experience in the markets and how I've been kind of tracking silver's price and what it has been doing and the fundamentals behind it. And that's what sells silver. It is the fact that the fundamentals are strong for silver. And really, when you think about it, they are unchanging. Silver is a metal that has been a dynamic uh, uh, element on the periodic table, uh, especially in the last hundred years. Silver is by far the most versatile metal on the periodic table. And that, I think, is one of its biggest selling points. In fact, there are more uses that have been found for silver um, uh, discovered in the last 20 years, I think, uh, that it is, especially with a lot of the technology sector growing at an incredible rate. And the biomedical field as well, too, silver is really, in a sense, a miracle metal. But, you know, one of the things that we focus on as far as uh, those of us who like to provide commentary on the metal is the fact that it is a stable store of value. But stability is something that really has been very tough to defend as of late with silver's price kind of being pretty volatile and really more and more so separating from gold in that arena. Hence is why the gold to silver ratio has been fairly steady above 80 to 1. Considering the mining ratio, anywhere between 7 and 10 to 1. Uh, many people really don't understand the disconnect between those two. But really, I just pretty much gave the argument for it. Because it is a commodity. In fact, it is seen more as a commodity these days than as a uh, monetary metal. Um, it's just in, in, the way that it has evolved. Even in the last 10 years, we've seen that the two metals separate in that regard. But I think it's almost ready to uh, break out. Now, what does a breakout mean? Uh, people define it, I think, in different ways. I think it's a consistent and solid price swing to the upside. And I think we're near it. How near are we to it? Well, I don't really know. I feel that sometime in 2024, we're going to see silver's price break out. And I, that does not mean that I think it's going to go to the moon. It does not mean that I think that silver's price is going to extend uh, at some miracle level, uh, even uh, getting anywhere near the all-time highs that we saw back in 2011 and in 1980. Which, by the way, if you adjust those for inflation, silver would have to get into triple digits to reach the uh, 1980 high. Um, and we're nowhere near that. In fact, we're less than half of the all-time nominal high in 2011. Silver has a long way to go. So a breakout, you must uh, have a more realistic vantage point and understanding of what the silver market is going to do and how it will react. What is the biggest driver for silver's price? Well, it would make it'd be a pretty solid argument to say that it depends on what this does. The dollar, well, it's inflating. It's inflating at a rate of 3.2% year over year. In fact, by the time you watch this video, that number will change likely or maybe not. Uh, the consumer price index um, is something that has been rather stubborn at around above 3% for a couple of months here. And they've not been able to really get it down much below that, this Federal Reserve, which is the United States Central Bank. But nonetheless, that is not the biggest really driver, I think, of silver's price.
it is right to some extent now, preventing it from falling to uh, much lower than what, it went, than what it was before inflation hit. But there are other factors I think that are going to drive it even more. The biggest is going to be industrial demand fundamentals. Uh, what is that going to look like in the coming year? Uh, pretty much everybody is uh, predicting that demand will increase in 2024. So therefore, it is likely that silver's price will rally and continue to increase at a steady rate. Um, amongst the dips, there's going to be bumps in the road, obviously, and those dips will come and find their ways. But we're going to see higher lows, I think, in 2024. And so that is going to be what's going to be happening. I think we're going to see a breakout of some sort to the upside that will be relatively consistent with dips that will be minor in comparison to what we've seen in the past. We may see some volatility to the upside and then pulls back to previous uh, recent lows. And I think we may see it stair step its way up in this breakout session, which will bring great excitement to the silver market. Because even a consistent move to the upside, uh, if we start to see, let's just say, let's throw some numbers out here. Let's say that silver gets up into the um, $26 range. We've not seen $26 for a while. And then it pulls back to $25.50. And then we start to climb up again to $26.50. And then we start to see it touch $27. Well, you know, that's, that's going to generate some excitement in the silver space, which means that people will start buying again. Of course, that's really not the best time to buy. The best time to buy is, is when there's dips now. When the price falls, uh, especially if gold rises and silver falls, that's really the time to buy. In fact, as I record this video, that's exactly what's happening. It's been a mixed market. We've seen more and more of the mixed market where we've seen the gold to silver widen. Every time that gold to silver ratio widens, especially when it's above 85 and gets close to 90 to 1, I believe that means silver is undervalued in that kind of environment. Um, and I think we're likely to see uh, potential in, uh, the potential for it to uh, really uh, break out and, and get up there. Um, you know, one thing we have seen over the past year or two is is we've seen it say stay consistently above twenty dollars an ounce, which is a victory. We should be able to take a victory lap with news like we can get news like that when we've not seen nineteen dollars silver for a while. Um, it's become I think it's become less and less likely that we're going to see anywhere near there as we press forward. Now there are obviously uh, circumstances that that could happen even well into next year. But I think that demand fundamentals will drive silver's price as as uh, supply chains start to come back together again, even amidst what we're hearing now coming out of eastern China is another type of virus that and that has been discovered. I don't know. I haven't heard much about it lately, uh, but who knows what that could bring into next year. We also have the election, the presidential election as well. Uh, there's a uh, that I think will bode well for silver's price as uncertainty will continue to rule the day and gold will continue to climb. But silver's price, I believe as well, will follow that even if it's not at the same rate. And even if the gold to silver ratio widens some, uh, which will frustrate silver stackers, no doubt about it. But I think that uh, there's going to be these demand fundamentals that are going to continue to put pressure uh, on the dollar and I think uh, gold and silver, especially with uh, potential rate hikes coming, rate hikes that will be coming in 2024 that are going to drive silver's price to the upside. Um, and gold will, will certainly be a part of that too. But I think that uh, that as well as demand fundamentals, you know, the, 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 there's a real possibility and we should be open to it. Uh, the most skeptic of skeptical of the silver stackers and the precious metal space of silver should be open to the possibility that silver could rally, break out. And in fact, it could even surpass most expectations. You know, I think that we should probably be thinking about a range somewhere, uh, you know, in the neighborhood of $30, maybe even more than that, if some of these things happen. 
um, for, for silver. I think that's not out of the realm of, of the possibility for a range anywhere between 26 and 30 bucks for next year. Now, this is not my prediction video. I'll be doing one of those later in the month of, 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 of a price target. Uh, but keep in mind, whenever I do things like that and provide a, uh, you know, a, a prediction video, uh, you know, you have to understand is by the end of next year, it's for entertainment purposes, it's for fun. I always kind of, you know, self-deprecate when I don't get it. I've, I've been wrong about silver by the end of the year for three years. But however, in between those years, I've been right about movements within the year um, uh, for silver's price. Uh, and I think that's just because, you know, you get an understanding of what happens in the markets from month to month, day to day, week to week. Uh, you have a better understanding. You can kind of gauge where the market's going, but you can get that wrong too. And I've gotten that wrong as well too. Uh, but in the end, what is it about? It is about uh, understanding that likely silver is going to prove itself fundamentally in the year to come. And that is likely all of the arrows are pointing to the upside, I think. I think there's more upside for silver than downside. Um, I think that's a pretty safe thing to say. I think most would agree with that. Even the most skeptical of the silver stackers out there um, will find that uh, you know that silver is doing better than uh, than expected, given the circumstance that we find ourselves in with the with the Federal Reserve that has been doing its best to tamp down the economy, the interest rates and the like, and uh, and the dollar is still inflating, and uh, we have some economic headwinds against us. There is uncertainty out there. And again, I think a recession probably is coming, an official recession is coming next year. And really, that's kind of what the Federal Reserve wants. So we'll keep an eye on it. But nonetheless, I think that it is almost ready. Uh, what does that mean and when will it happen? I think sometime in 2024, likely. I think 2024 is likely to become a wild year. And I think that silver will be affected by it. Uh, in multiple different ways, multiple different ways. I could be wrong. It'd be interesting to see if I'm wrong about this. That, that would be, but I think probably most feel that um, that silver is ready for it. Uh, it will react. It will react to whatever happens, whether it be dom in domestic politics, geopolitics, um, and the things with the wars that are going on, which are likely not going to slow down uh, in uh, 2024. Um, but, you know, uh, so there's a lot of different factors that are coming into play. Um, I think more so that are in the positive side for silver. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section below. I hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.